everybody. We're so glad you're here with us today. As we continue to grow as a church, we need to make room for one more. So please get up right now, scoot in, and make room for one more. Service will begin soon. Did you know we have a wonderful next-gen ministry here at Heritage? For children ages three months through fifth grade, we have Evergreen Kids available during every Sunday gathering and Wednesday nights at 6.30. And for students in sixth grade through 12th grade, we have Evergreen Youth. That happens on Wednesdays at 6.30. downloaded our Heritage app yet, now is the time. There you can find all the information and resources you need here at Heritage, like events, ways to get, sermon notes, and our weekly connect card that helps us get to know more about you and know how to pray for you. You can find the Heritage app by searching Heritage Church Minnesota in the App Store. Hey everybody, we're so glad you're here with us today. As we continue to grow as a church, we need to make room for one more. So please get up right now, scoot in, and make room for one more. Service will begin soon. wonderful next-gen ministry here at Heritage. For children ages three months through fifth grade, we have Evergreen Kids available during every Sunday gathering and Wednesday nights at 6.30. And for students in sixth grade through 12th grade, we have Evergreen Youth. That happens on Wednesdays at 6.30. Heritage app yet. Now is the time. There you can find all the information and resources you need here at Heritage, like events, ways to get, sermon notes, and our weekly connect card that helps us get to know more about you and know how to pray for you. You can find the Heritage app by searching Heritage Church Minnesota in the App Store.
that no matter what you bring, always in love with you, no matter your history, always in love with you, no matter your God loves the world in this way. He gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I have tasted and I have seen.
sing your love your love is better than life I can't even wrap my mind come on one day here in your house it's better than a thousand elsewhere yeah. keeps on running running keeps on running after me you keep on running running keep on running after me And his love is pursuing after you this morning. If you haven't felt it yet, he's here. This presence of God is with us this morning. Thank you, God, for your precious blood, which you spilled for us, Lord. That you loved us that much to lay down your life. Thank you. 
for eternity. Because of the good news of Jesus Christ, God loved you and me and the whole world enough to send his son to die on a cross for us for forgiveness of sins. And even better, three days later, he rose from the grave, defeating sin and death. Yeah, that's a hallelujah right there. Because of that, because of what he did in defeating sin and death, we get to spend eternity in heaven forever with him. And that's why we're here today, to celebrate the risen Christ. And what he's still doing today, he's the God of the living, still very much alive today, bringing dead things to life. So as we continue to celebrate, please check out these videos. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. Hi, Heritage. My name is Chad. I hope that you're enjoying the service so far. It's our goal at Heritage to make you and your family feel welcome and help you get connected. In fact, after the message today, everyone will be asked to turn the connect card. Whether it's your first time here or you've been going here for years, we ask that you feel as much as you feel comfortable with. The connection card is a great way for us to get to know you better, help you find your next step, and know how we can be praying for you. You can find the connection card in the slot by your feet. Go ahead and grab one now so that you can start filling it out and have it available to you during the message. If you're watching online, you can access the connection card on our Heritage app. During the month of March, we will give $5 for each first time guest who completes a connection card towards the Salvation Army. The Brainerd Lake Salvation Army assists local residents with a wide range of basic needs and services, including grocery help through the food shelf. 
Next, if you'd like to give financially today, you can do so by dropping your gift off in the offering bins in the lobby or going onto our website at IamHeritage.org. Your giving makes a continued impact in this community. Now, let's take a look at what's coming up at Heritage. We are excited about our growing church. Starting next week, April 7th, we are moving to three services on Sunday morning. Join us at 8.30, 10, or 11.30 a.m. We will still have our Wednesday gathering at 6.30 p.m. Water baptisms are happening on April 3rd and April 7th. If you've been thinking about taking the next step and making a public declaration, we encourage you to sign up. For all the details, check out our app. That's it for this week. See you next time. Hey, give your neighbor a high five. Say welcome to the house of God. Happy Easter to you. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, it's been a good week this week. It's been a good day today. I told our first and second gatherings, I'm coming all day. This was so good, I'm not missing a gathering. It's been awesome. And uh, yeah, so, uh, hey, I want to invite you back next week. We have new gathering times. Um, man, we're dunking people for Jesus in his honor. And uh, water baptism next week. If you've never been to our water baptism uh, experiences, it's, it's really powerful. It's unbelievable as people resurrect, uh, as Jesus resurrected for us. New life, new beginning. What a powerful symbol of an inward work in people's lives. That's huge. That's a big deal. And uh, I want to invite our home team, people that call Heritage your home, uh, to be there at 8, 30, and 11. Just to make sure that there's room at the 10. And uh, so exciting. And uh, hey, today is one of those days that everybody knows uh, what the pastor is going to talk about. And that's true. I mean, I'm, a, I'm really at a disadvantage, right? It's like, um, the, you know, Jesus, the resurrection, it's awesome. I, I, I never watched this movie, but it's called Smoke, and it was released in 1995. I was watching or reading about it this week, and it's centered around uh, the Brooklyn Cigar Company on the corner of 3rd and 8th. And a guy by the name of Augie Wren owns it, and every morning, without fail, at 8 in the morning, he goes out to the same spot on the corner, and he takes a picture of his store. The angle of the camera never varies, just the weather, the people on the street, and the color of the sky. And one of Augie's customers, Paul Benjamin, comes in one day, and Paul has been struggling with a writer's block. And he had lost his wife, Ellen, she was pregnant, and she was tragically shot in front of the cigar store. He comes in, I think, just kind of trying to reminisce and find himself, and they kind of, they started talking about um, the, the love that Augie had for photography, and so much to the point where they decided to shut the store down for a little bit and go to his house, and he started to show the photography, his hobby, his passion, his art, uh, and then he pulled out this heavy binder and Paul Benjamin starts looking through Augie's art and notices on every page there's four pictures of him, uh, of the, the photography of, uh, that he has of, of the cigar store. Same place, same time of day. And he starts flipping through it. And you could tell that every picture increased boredom happens. He's like, this is, you know, and he starts flipping more and more through it quickly and at the end uh, of, of him getting to the back of the binder, uh, Augie slab, slams his hand down. And he says this. He says, you know what? You're never going to get it unless you slow down. And so uh, here's what Paul said. Augie, they're all the same. He says, you know what? This is my corner. And every picture, all 4,000 of them are different. And he says, when he, as soon as he said that, Paul Benjamin looks down and he notices his wife pregnant in one of the photos. And he says, now all the photos don't look the same anymore. See, it became personal. And I think sometimes as we come to Easter, it's like another, another day, another dollar, another service, another Easter. You're inviting me again, Mom. I mean, it's like, come on. It's like really nothing has really changed, you know. It's, it's this idea of, of it not being personal. But, but I, I hope that if you just slow down a little bit, that Jesus will show up in your life in a life-changing way. And that what you saw as boredom page after page, after Easter after Easter, that this year it would mean something totally different and totally new. 
I, I got on TripAdvisor uh, this week, and I was curious on uh, what they said about the empty tomb. Like, they, they, they believe it's in Jerusalem. It's, the, it's the, actually the eighth attraction, the eighth rated attraction out of 420 if you're visiting Jerusalem. It's the eighth. In fact, it's a rated 4.5 out of 5. I'm like, that's a tough crowd. In fact, I, then I started reading some of the reviews. Check it out. This is what people said about the empty too. It's crazy. Here's one from a lady. And uh, basically, uh, she says this. This is the only site in Jerusalem that I didn't understand the hype about. Yeah, I stayed a block from it. Yeah, a lot of people do. They stay away from it. And it didn't really wow me or move me at all. Uh, here's Mo, Mo, uh, Monique. She says this, uh, not worth the tour. There's very little to see. And I said, that's kind of the point, isn't it? Like the idea that you're going to look and there's no body. That's like the point that, uh, of the tomb, the empty tomb. That's why it's empty, right? So there's not very little to see. It attracts group of religious tourists. Uh, admission is free, though. All right, cheapskate. All right. <laughs> Here's a happy customer, 777. I love this. I felt like I was at the Disney park. Everything seemed staged and forced. Nothing they said or I saw seemed real. And I'm like, what does a guy got to do to impress people? I mean, he got up out of the tomb. That's a big deal. And, and I want to tell you today that Scripture talks about how it's important. Uh, it's, it should be important to us. And I, I hope today that if there's anything that you walk away with, you walk away with the knowledge that the resurrection is a huge importance. In fact, look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says this, I pass on to you what was most important. So there's a lot, so chapter 15, there was a lot of other things that Paul had already said in his letter. And now he's coming to what he's saying next, and he's saying it's the most important. What, what is that? Well, look at what he says. And what has been passed on to me? Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried, and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by 12. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James. I want to pause here. Uh, it, James is a big deal. Remember, this is the half-brother uh, of Jesus, James. And, and in fact, uh, James and his family earlier in Mark, the book of Mark, said he, talking about Jesus, he's out of his mind. He, they, they, that's what they thought. Now, uh, the James that said he's out of his mind is actually, actually becoming a leader of the movement that is Christianity, that he's Lord. What happened? Well, here's what happened. James appeared to him. What would it take for you to believe that your brother was the son of God? <laughs> Be pretty interesting. So when we see James, it's a big deal. And later by the apostles. Look at verse 14. And if Christ had not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. We should just go home, put the hand back in the freezer, forget about celebrating today. Because today is not about bunnies and eggs, it's about Jesus. And if Jesus didn't resurrect, then we should put the bunnies back on the shelves, the eggs back in the carton, and call it a day. But since it is true, since it did happen, it is massively important. See, Christianity is not about a philosophy or, or simply a way to approach life. It is actually a historical reality based on facts. That, that nobody disputes that Jesus was actually a real person, that he really died. And many historians that are not believers, like Josephus said, that, that he really did resurrect. So what you and I have is we don't have faith in faith. We actually know and have facts that Jesus did indeed leave the tomb, like alive again. That's a big deal. This is not like James and the giant peach and Jesus. This is like a historical reality. In fact, H.G. Wells, a famous historian, teacher, and author who was not a Christian, said this. He said, I am a historian, I am not a believer, but I must confess that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the center of human history. 
Jesus Christ is easily the most dominant figure in all history. Here, here's what Acts 1-3 says. It says this, uh, after his suffering, this is Jesus, he, Jesus, presented himself to them, look at this, and gave many convincing proofs. Like, when Jesus won the Super Bowl, he didn't win by a field goal. When Jesus won the Super Bowl over death, he ran the score up on the enemy on, and on death. And so we have not just a few things that kind of sort of believe that he resurrected. He ran the score up and gave us evidence upon evidence that he is real and he is who he says he is. Many convincing proofs, right? Um, several weeks ago, I went to a T-Wolves game. We got any T-Wolves fans in here? Basketball, yeah, T-Wolves. And um, my brother and I and nephew were, were hungry for some barbecue. And so I looked up on my app and we found Old Southern Barbecue. And so we walked in and there's the mesmerizing menu. A lot of people will pray over their food, not me. I first pray over the menu. Like, Lord, yea, though I walk through the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you got to be with me when I order. Amen. Because the last thing that I want is to order something and look at theirs and wish I had theirs, that wish it was mine. So I pray twice, pray over the menu, Lord lead me, and then I pray over the food, bless it, amen. I don't know why I said that, just because I like food. And if you brought some ribs in right now, I would eat them right now. <laughs> Love me some ribs. But anyway, back to the story, I was looking, and I looked to my left, and there was some table of some people uh, that were kind of, they were talking and hobnobbing, and, and it was different. You, you, I kind of got this impression that something was going on here. And, uh, and I, then I looked, and there was an older guy that had uh, a hat on, and I looked at the hat, and it said, Famous Dave's. <laughs> That's like wearing a Taco Bell hat into a Taco John's. That's like wearing a Vikings jersey to a Bears game. Somebody should kick that dude out. That should be illegal. That's not even, that's, there's no etiquette in that, man. So I'm frustrated the whole, I'm like eating and I'm watching, I'm giving the guy this stink eye, he's not looking at me. And uh, my brother's trying to call, I'm just frustrated. I'm like, what goal to wear a Famous Dave's hat into an old southern barbecue place? So one of the ladies got up from the table, she came and threw trash uh, next to me, threw it away, and I said, hey, who's the guy with the Famous Dave's hat on? And this is what she said, oh, that's my father-in-law, that's Famous Dave. Up until this point, I thought Famous Dave was like Dave was some mascot somewhere that really didn't exist. It was some marketing way to sell ribs. It never dawned on me that Famous Dave was a real Dave. And here's a picture of us. Uh, and, and it, <laughs> I'm like, he's here. Like, he's real. And he invited us to his table. He, he let us try uh, this barbecue sauce he's been working on for 30 years. And I look outside and I'm like, there's the, his Escalade with Rib King on the license plates. I am in the presence of ribs. Is this barbecue ribs? Yes! Come on, you guys! Oh, I'm eating them in front of everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bo. You're amazing. Come on! That was not planned. Wow, I'm so excited. I promise you I will be, uh, maybe I should eat them right now and get all over my face and be like, what's up? Welcome to church. <laughs> that is so great. Anyway, back today, but you know, a lot of people walk into church today and they don't realize they're in the presence of the famous Jesus. And in fact, uh, they think that he's some mascot of the church when he's really meaningful to their lives. And he wants, you to, he wants you to meet him in a personal way. And so my whole prayer is, is that today you would be captured not by the rib king, but by the king of kings and the Lord of lords that resurrected on the third day for your life and for my life. Yeah. That's a big deal. I'm going to preach on ribs every week. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, I thought he was a mascot because I never met him personally. Jesus is more than a mascot that we celebrate once a year in the name of religion. He is a personal savior that we celebrate every day of the year in relationship with him that makes us alive. So, so that, that's the key. And so, But you know what's cool? Not only did Jesus come back to life, but um, he brought other people back to life. 
That to me is, is, is pretty close to the same intrigue that I have for him resurrecting. Because one thing to, to resurrect yourself, which is huge, it's the most important. But it's another thing to have people around you come out of death into life. See, if you, if you have a funeral and you don't want it messed up, don't invite Jesus. Because Jesus messed up every funeral he went to. So if you have somebody in your life that, that you want to stay dead, don't give Jesus an invitation. All right, so I want to talk to you today about a couple of resurrections Jesus showed up at in the or funerals. And he, 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 they got up. Yeah, that's all, that's all I know. Here, here's the first one. Look at it. The resurrection of a friend. In fact, uh, here's the mic drop that I want to give you today is I can have life because of only one. Uh, you, you're going to get that in a second. See, here, here's the point that uh, there's three friends. Uh, they're siblings of Jesus. Um, there's two girls, uh, Mary and Martha, and then the brother, Lazarus. And the problem was somewhere along the line, Lazarus got sick. And they called on Jesus because they were in good friendship with him. And uh, he died. Uh, he didn't respond right away to their invitation to pray. And so Mary and Martha, Martha in particular, was really frustrated at Jesus. And here's the conversation. Look at it. Uh, verse 11, or 21 out of chapter 11. Martha said to Jesus, if you'd have been here, my brother would have died, wouldn't have died. And now, even now, it's, it's not too late. It's, it's, I, there's still hope, for I know God will bring my brother back to life again if you will only ask him to. Verse 23, Jesus told her, your brother will come back to life again. Verse 24, yes, Martha said, uh, when everyone else does on the resurrection day. See, uh, she was thinking at, at like end, end of the world stuff, like someday, you know, Jesus is going to do this thing and everybody's going everybody's to resurrect. And, and him, her and Jesus are talking about two different types of resurrection. Here's what, and, and what Jesus is trying to, 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 to get her to understand, it's not about someday later, it's about what I can do right now, right here. And, and here's the conversation. Jesus told her, I'm the one that raises the dead and gives them life again. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like everyone else, shall live again. He has, the given eternal, uh, he, has give, he has given eternal life for believing in me. Look at this. And shall never perish. Do you believe this, Martha? See, I look at this whole deal with Lazarus. And Jesus really <clears throat> wants us to believe him. He, he wanted Martha to believe him. And you're going to see in a, a few seconds, he's going to call Lazarus out of the tomb. And when, you, when Jesus calls you out of the tomb, you come. Uh, and, and, and then he, before he does that, he prays to his father. And basically he says, hey, uh, I'm hoping that as I do this, people are going to believe that you sent me. That I'm more than just some sort of illusionist, but I am the son of God. And God, let them see that you, Father, back me in what I'm going to do so they believe in me or put faith in me for their own life. Look at, look at what happens. This is incredible. So they rolled the stone away. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, of course. But I said it because of those people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out bound. You know, I, I just kind of seen doing, the, you, know, <laughs> you know, that kind of deal. And uh, his, his face is muffled in his head. And Jesus said, unwrap him and let him go. And, and, and the whole debacle is Martha's mad because he waited four days. The Bible said he stinketh. In other words, he stank. And, um, and, and here is Martha. And, and now we understand why. The reason Jesus let the friend die was so that the resurrection could show people that, that he was believable so that they would believe that Jesus could make them alive again. And, and so we, we look at this. If you don't believe or put trust in him and follow him, your life can't receive the life that Jesus gives. And, and I love this because there's so many things that we could put our faith in, isn't there? Politicians, money, security, a relationship, she looking good, he looking good. But we put our, put our faith in the wrong stuff and then we wonder why our life is in the shape it's in. And here's what Jesus said in verse 25, I'm the one. And I heard that this week and I heard God say, I'm the one. See, see everybody else is juking to be the one. 
and they can pose and overpromise and underdeliver, but I'm the one that will promise and deliver. See, everybody else promises life, but they, they won't give you life. But I'm, I'm the one that gives you life and gives it to you more abundantly. I'm the one that can take an empty soul, a broken soul, and bring healing to their life. I'm the one. I am the only one that can bring to you what I can bring to you. I'm the only one. So why do I look for other places to do what only Jesus can do? In fact, Ephesians 2, 4, 5 says this. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive. With this resurrection, Jesus is saying, I'm going to do everything I can do for people to believe and put faith in me so I can make them alive. It's the life of Jesus and only Jesus. Nothing else, nobody else that can make me alive. Everybody say number two. All right, here we go. Here's the second funeral Jesus messed up. It's the resurrection of a son. In fact, uh, it's a widow's son. And, and here's the, the mic drop. I can have a life that others have. It's a remarkable story. And I'm going to kind of, you can look at it. You can look at it in your app. But basically what happens is, is there is a mother who lost her son, but she also lost her widow. And there's a whole entourage of people exiting the city to bury the son. But at the same time, there is also an entourage with Jesus entering the city. The group that is exiting is a group of death because the widow's son had died. The group entering is one full of life. And I look at this text and I'm like, that's exactly what happens at Easter because there is a collision in our lives at Easter where the death meets life. But the life can bring death can bring life to the death of dead people. See, the only son of one group that was celebrated and being mourned for met the, the only son of God in the other group. It's pretty remarkable. And, and what's interesting is in the last part of the text, it says this. So Jesus goes up to the, to the beer, which is an open casket, and he puts his hand on it, and he tells the boy to get up, and he gets up. Can you imagine a huge funeral procession? And Jesus just says, you know what? He just walks up, uh, and he just lays his hand, and somebody comes to life. That's an awesome thing. And, uh, and then after all that happens, here's what happens because of result of that. Verse 17 says, the news about Jesus spread. And so I look at that reality that the only son is dead, meaning another only son that is alive. And this collision is the idea that, man, it caused the news to spread. And, and, and what's cool is you and I are still the recipient of that resurrection. Uh, that you and I, because of Jesus is who he is, that that, that resurrection is still stirring the news. But I want to challenge you that the news is evidence that Jesus can do in you what he did in other people. And the tendency is, is it spreads. And the reason it spreads is that the resurrection of other people is proof that he can resurrect you too. Is that, that he can cause, I, there's so many times that I see people's life and, 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 I, and I see them living for the Lord and I'm like, that's evidence that Jesus not only did it for them, but he can do it for you. Look at what he says. Look at what, what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians. The only letter I need is you yourselves. Here's by looking at the, the good change in your hearts. So that everyone can see we have done a good work among you. And then it goes on to talk about that, that, that other people talking about this new agreement that saves them. So, so what I'm telling you is, is that if you need another convincing proof. That Jesus is who he says he was. Just look next to you. You want to come next week when 30 people come out of the grave of an old life in baptism. That resurrection in their life is proof positive that there is resurrection available to you. And the whole country began to see Jesus because of this boy being resurrected. And Jesus, the news is still spreading with people's lives that are being changed. So with this, this resurrection, Jesus is saying, if you pay attention, you'll see that I'm still making people alive all around you, and you can experience it too. I'm not going to come to other dead people and make them alive and leave you out of it. Here's what I wrote down. The life in others helps me see God for being real. Here's the last resurrection. Everybody say number three. It's the resurrection of a little girl, and it says, I can have life no matter what. Here, here's the story of a father, Jarius who comes to Jesus and he pleads with him to come and pray for her so she can be healed and live. 
Jesus actually went with him. In the process of going to, the, to his house, um, another lady actually touches his clothes and becomes healed herself. So, of course, Jesus is uh, he, he's completely fixated on this, and he, and he begins to engage in a conversation with the lady that just got healed on the way to a girl that needs healed. And then all of a sudden, look at what happens. Uh, Mark chapter 5, while Jesus was still speaking, some people from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, said this, your daughter's dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? So, so, so there's people that are like, it's over. I, I know that you, you went and tried to get him, uh, but they show up on the road in the middle of this conversation with this other lady, and they're like, don't bother him. Uh, she's dead. He doesn't need to come and pray. It's, it's over. But I love that Jesus, here's what the text says, he overhears this. And, and, and I love how there's times in our life when we doubt and we think it's over, but Jesus overhears us. And he interjects a thought about what we think is over. And he's like, I, I, it's not over until I say it's over. Look at what he says. Jesus, uh, overhearing, told them, don't be afraid, just believe. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But look at this, but they laughed at him. So he finally gets to the house and he's like, man, she's not, clearly, <laughs> clearly she's not dead. She is sleeping. Everybody's like, you are out of your mind. And they laughed. But then he kicks him out. That's what the Bible says. He kicks him out of the house. Mom and dad are still there. And, he, and she gets resurrected. She gets, she gets brought back to life. And he's like, get her some food. And, and I, I look at that and I'm like, what a tremendous reality that Jesus goes in, tells everybody to leave. That's cool. But then I look at this, that there's so many people that think their life is too far gone. That they think, man, you know what, I don't care what you're preaching on Easter, you don't know my addiction, or I don't care what you're saying, you don't know my marriage. But I want you to hear the words of Jesus that he said in this moment. As he listens to our lives, here's what he says, don't be afraid, just believe. In other words, I, can, I don't care how over you feel like it is, it's not over until I say it's over. That, that look, that, that I don't care if, if people think your life is dead. I don't care if people think your life is dead because you drink too much. I don't care if people think your life is dead because you walked out on her. I don't care if you think that your life is empty and it can never be the same again. Don't be afraid and believe in me. Powerful stuff from, from the Lord. And here's what's awesome. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. That when you and I begin to make a decision for Christ, I don't care how dead it feels, the same spirit that was on Easter, thousands of years ago as he, as he came back to life, is the same living Holy Spirit that can make dead things live in your life. You know, uh, with this resurrection, Jesus is saying it doesn't matter how things appear, my power is greater. That, that it's never too late to come alive. Story after story of Jesus bringing people to life. I love that he comes back to life, which is huge. Because he could never come back to life. He could, that, that couldn't, the next part couldn't be true if he didn't come back to life. That because he resurrected, which is most important, gives me the reality that he can do it for other people. So have you, have you had this coming alive experience in your life? I mean, it's just phenomenal. And that's what I hope for you today. You know, some of you are like, what's the, what's the t-shirt for? Somebody said, you're not wearing a suit. I told you I'd wear it on Good Friday, right? And so today, it's all about Rocky Balboa. So, yeah, and, and I, I have this vendetta that I, I feel like I need to get Rocky into as many sermons as humanly possible. <laughs> and I just do, and I figured Easter, why not? So this, this shirt is an iconic shirt, and uh, we really know... Uh, the reason for the shirt based upon Rocky II. Uh, there's a long story that it really, in Rocky I, somebody edited out an important scene that lets us know that this shirt was actually a gift from Adrian to Rocky in support of him. We don't know that because they deleted it out, but Rocky II is really where we find this shirt for the first time. Uh, you can show a picture of it. I think it's right here. I know I look a lot like him. Um, <laughs> we're, we're very much so alike. And uh, but just, you know, it's just, it, we're twins, I know. And, uh, but, but remember the story. Uh, there's a rematch happening with uh, Apollo. Adrian is letting him know that she doesn't think it's, that, that he should box anymore. Uh, she's pregnant with her first baby, and she's like, you should take care of your family. 
And her discontent makes Rocky very distracted and lethargic, and his drive begins to die. Remember, he was chasing chickens and eating eggs raw. Now he can't even get to the gym. He's not even working hard. In fact, Mick, his trainer, actually walks out and says, you know what, I can't do anything with this. Well, the story continues to unfold. Adrian's rushed to the hospital with her baby. She gives birth to the baby, but she slips into a coma. And so for a lot of days, there's a lot of travail and a lot of sadness. But fortunately, one day she comes out of coma and in the hospital room is transformed. And you, you get to see Rocky and Adrian meeting their baby boy for the first time. It's awesome. And then, of course, he had a lot of time to think about his life, and he gets ready to tell her, and he does. I've been thinking about, you know, me uh, mingling with Creed and all, and I think I'm going to, uh, you know. So he begins to tell him, uh, tell Adrian, I'm not going to fight anymore. You're right. And then Adrian, in a poetic oh, way, says, I want to tell you something. Come here. And, and so he gets closer to her, and she he says, what? And she says, come here. It gets, he gets closer, and then he gets really close, and she smiles and says this, when? You see his face start to change, and, and she needed to clarify what she meant by that, and she says, I want you to win. And then it's awesome. A bell tolls in the background, perfectly timed, and all of a sudden, life comes back into to Rocky, and uh, it's awesome. And all of a sudden, in the background, Mick's hanging out in the corner, and you hear this. What are you waiting for? <laughs> yes. And I'm going to ask you something today. What are you waiting for? You know what, what? What are you waiting for? How much more evidence? How much more life change? How much more reality do you need to know that God is speaking this over your life? He's saying, Max, he's saying, Michael, he's saying, Jane, I want you to win. I'm no longer excited about a life of death, but I want you to win. I created you to win and to live. So what are you waiting for? That's a great question. So if you would grab your next step card real quick, I want you to look at this. I want everybody in this room to make a decision for the Lord. Make it, I want somebody, I want you to make your mark. Well, I don't want to, just, would you just do it? I mean, Jesus resurrected from the, from the tomb. Surely you could put an X and turn a card in a gray box. Right? I mean, come on, make a decision today. Here's what I want you, this is a self-assessment piece. So here, here's, the, here's the reality. My life in Jesus or my response to Jesus is one of these, and I gave you kind of four, four options. Number one, I'm already in a real relationship, life-changing relationship with Jesus. That's different than religion. I, I, he's my, I met him. I know who he is. He's not a mascot. He means something to me. Personal Savior. Number two, here it is. I'm starting a new relationship with Jesus today and want to get baptized next week. I added that baptism next week because it's not too late. I would love nothing more to see you dunk like an Oreo next week because you received Christ in your life this week. So, man, that's, that's on the table. Uh, number three is I, I want to wait and consider a, a bit more about Jesus. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you're taking it serious because so many people will make a decision and that count the cost of what it means to live for the Lord. And I'm glad you're, like, making it serious that you're waiting. You're, you're seeing if it's a real deal. You're watching other people that say they're resurrected and you want to know if it's real. Here's the last one. Number four is I'm, I'm taking the challenge of attending six weeks in a row to see God work in my life. Here's the point of that. Attend and apply, and you'll see the power of God work in your life. So many people come one time a year, and they want the life. But listen, you got to apply the word of God, and you have to put yourself in a position to encounter the power of God. So I want to challenge you. If you're like, I'll consider it. Well, consider and attend and let God show you his power over the next few weeks. So maybe that's the next one for you. Let me pray for you today. I want you to stand with me in this place. And uh, man, happy Easter. Eat some ribs for me, would you? The resurrection matters, man. He brings dead people to life. Let me pray for you today. Jesus, thank you for making dead things live. Everybody needs life. Amen. you are 
Just as you are, it's time to come home out of the dark. No need to hide, he already sees you. Don't be afraid to show him your face. He won't turn you away. He'll never turn you away. And everybody needs, everybody needs, everybody needs saving. Everybody breaks, everybody bleeds. You don't have to be ashamed. Call on Jesus. Say his name. Just receive him in your heart and you will be saved. God has raised him from the grave. Just believe What you did on the cross still say 